Hello everybody, this is Manuel at Manuel Martel Photography. Today I would like to show you how to create an action sequence image in Luminar Neptune. So I'll show you this process which is quite simple once you understand the technique and then you'll be able to apply that to any images you want to create in the future. So if you take a look at the images I have here, I just went outside and threw the frisbee and uh, the final image looked like I am throwing myself a frisbee. So it's nothing super exciting but the technique again I'll show you will be able to be applied to way more exciting subject than me throwing myself a frisbee. But if you take a look here on the right side in the layers panel you'll see I have a lot of different layers that I use. I use a lot of different masks as well. So the key here is you'll need a base image and then you're gonna build some layers on top of it. So let's go take a look and choose my base image. I'm gonna choose this one. So the reason why you want a base image is you want to have an image to be able to build on it. So I chose this one because I am standing here and there's a shadow and I would not be able to repl replicate that very easily in Luminar. So I chose that one as my base image. Your base image could be a blank canvas, like if you were to take a look at a ski jump, for example, in a ski hill, you may want the jump by itself and then as your blank canvas, as your base image, and then add image per image and build your uh, jumper, the skier, sorry, that jumps one image at a time that way afterwards. So this is my base image. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to my layer panel here. I'm going to press the plus button here and I'm going to go to add new image layer. And I will go through my images. I have this one which I'm not too fond of my position but I quite like the frisbee because it's big. And I'll show you in a second what we're going to do with this but I like this one better. Uh, my throwing position I find it's better. So we're going to choose this image and we're going to open that. So what happened here is this image took over meaning that now it is hiding layer zero. My base image is gone. So what we need to do here is to go around to that little wheel and we're going to go to the mask and we're going to create an inverted mask. We're going to press invert mask. So now that layer is gone. So the reason being we created a black mask over the layer. So black will hide, will conceal and white reveal. So what we need to do is like selectively reveal myself and the frisbee in this image. So we're going to go to the brush and in order to do that we're going to change the opacity to 100% and the softness, let's bring it down to maybe around 20%, 15%, somewhere in that mark. Now make sure that you are on the fill. The brush got to be like this and it should be a, you could see a plus into your circle in your brush. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start painting myself back into the image. So I'm just going to point out that it was windy so the trees were moving quite a bit. So it's something that we'll need to keep an eye uh, when we are dealing close to the branches and so forth of the tree. So in that case, what we're going to do here is I'm going to change the size of the brush a little smaller and I'm going to follow my arm that I'll find my hand here and we're going to go find that frisbee which is right there. Okay, so I will zoom in a bit to show you what happened here above, below my arm. The tree is not looking natural, it is cut because it was moving with the wind. Same thing happened here. So what we're going to do here is press on Alt Option on the Mac and then we're able to just hide this again. So by using the minus into your brush or what you can do is go here and press this and that will change your brush to be permanently into the minus. So we are just rehiding things away. So when I'm painting right now, if you take a look on the right side in my black rectangle, which was all solid black, now my body, you can tell the shape a little bit, which is white, which it means that my body have been revealed in the image. So now it's showing. So this is how we're going to work with our masks. Basically, we're going to invert the mask, find what we want to work with, and then we're going to paint it back into the image. Okay, so now we're going to go to my layer. We're going to press add a new image layer, and then we will choose 
first image. So I didn't like the body position in this one, but I like the frisbee, right? So we're going to choose this one and press open. So what I want to do here is this frisbee, I like this shape, so we're going to move this shape close to my hand. In order to do that, I could try to go here and choose the transform tool and then try to move it to the position, which is very hard to see. You can try to change your opacity and do that as well if you want to. Um, it's a way you can do that. But I'll show you another technique that I find fairly simple myself and that we're going to work with here. We're going to go to my layer option, we can create a mask, and we're going to invert this mask. So what I'm going to do here is with my brush, make sure there's a plus in it. We're back in here. I will find this frisbee and I will make it visible. And I'm just going to paint this out of there. there. And then wherever I want this frisbee to be, which is going to be close to my hand, I'm going to paint in there as well. Wherever the frisbee will be, I'm just going to paint in there. And then I will go to my transform tool. And then I can move this around. And now, because I created a mask, I can actually see where this frisbee is going. So I'm going to press apply. And then what we're going to do afterwards is we're going to zoom in. And same thing here, we're going to press the Alt Option key and then we will hide by painting with the minus sign and then we're going to paint around the frisbee. Now I'm going to be doing that fairly quick here, So, but whenever you do that at home, you got to take your, your time doing this. You will want to zoom in and make sure that your selection is good. So if you're shooting a skier, now you will require to do some fine masking, zoom in as much as you can and change the size of your brush constantly to suit your need. That's my advice there. Okay, and then that's good. So we're gonna go around and press plus, add the next image, open, and then I'll spot the frisbees right here. So what I'm gonna do here is same thing. We gonna mask, invert, and then right there, boom, here it is. So I will fast forward the next few images because this is all I'm going to do is import the image, create a mask, and then reveal the frisbee only. So let's fast forward. Okay, welcome back. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do one final movement. This one, I find this last little bit is out of place. So again, we're going to go to a transform tool because I went a little wider with my um, with my brush. I'm able to move this. I can apply and then this little circle there may stay there. So what we're going to do is press the option alt and then we're going to hide the rest there. Here we go. So I have my action sequence. The frisbee is flying good. And you just saw how easy it was. Now, there's a few things you can do because if you keep this image like this and save it, it's going to be huge because you get like a lot of images in there and stuff like that. So there's a few things you can do uh, once you're done. You can if you want, right click anywhere in those image there and you can press merge all layers, merge all visible layers. And what's going to happen if you do that? And it's going to merge all your layers together and then create one single image. So you're going to reduce the actual size of your image a lot. But if you want to work in a non-destructive way, because if you find that there's something wrong down the road, you can't do anything now. So I'm going to revert this. What you can do instead is create a master copy instead and do your adjustment on this. So if you go around, press the plus button in layers, you're going to create a new stamp layer. And by doing that, Luminar will combine everything we have and create one master copy of it. And then if you want to apply some filter to it, you're more than welcome to do it there. 
So that way I can go add filter, can let's say do a little vignette if I want to, and then create my vignette. And it's going to be applied to this specific image. So let's say you're happy with this. Now, if you want, you can double check, make sure everything is nice and fine and dandy. And then you did not destruct anything there. You can always revert, let's say, to this specific uh, image there with your brush. You can go around and do whatever adjustment you want. If you think that that was too wide, you didn't like it, then you go around and then change it. It's all good. Whoops. I mean, I've gone a little overboard with the. Here we go. Okay. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you learn how to create an action sequence. It is fairly simple. Just remember you need a good solid base image. And then what you do is then you layer per layer add stuff to it. Make sure you only show what you want to show in the image. You only show and you basically create, sorry, uh, masks on your layer and you reveal the only part you want. That way you don't mess around with your base layer. Okay, so whenever that's done, it's a lot of layers. What I suggest is you go around and then you merge all of your layers together to save some space if you save the image as a Luminar file. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, if you want to take a look at my blogs on my journal, you'll find links right here into the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, if you'd like to learn more, or if you have different topics you want covered, just let me know in the comment uh, section below. All right. Thanks for watching again. Bye.